So thank you both for being here this morning. Uh, if you could just briefly tell us a little bit about yourselves, maybe we'll start with you, Nate. Yeah, so I went on my first crew camp 20 years ago, started leading about 15. I've been directing for nearly, maybe nearly a decade now, and for the last five I've also had the joy of being um, camp's committee chair, which has been great fun. When I'm not at camp, when I'm not um, doing some volunteering with crew, I work as a director in management consulting. Uh, I'm married to the delightful Evelyn, and we have three teenage children. We live in Borkham Hills. We go to Norwest Anglican. Uh, yeah, I first went on a crew camp as a camper probably 30 years ago, and then, yeah, 25 years ago, got into leading, directing. Uh, I, too, have spent some time on camps committee, including some time as uh, chair of camps committee. Um, so, yeah, that's a little bit. Uh, oh, and during the week, I'm a civil engineer by profession, currently working for Sydney Metro, uh, building a section of the new metro line between St Mary's and the new Western Sydney Airport. Well, thank you. That's great to hear just a little bit from both of you. Uh, Mick, I might start with you. Can you tell me a little bit about the man sitting next to you, uh, how you know each other, and maybe how your dynamic has changed across the years? All right, yeah, so I first met Nate. We, we actually can't remember or, or pin a year on it. We think it was around 2002. I was a leader on a sailing camp um, that I'd been leading on already for a few years and Nate came along as a camper. You were about 14 or so, I think. Around there, and I was also about as lanky as you then too. Yeah. So, yeah. so, but what I remember about Nate at that time was uh, he just, like me at the same age, he loved camp, he loved to cram as much fun and action and adventure into each day of camp as he could. Uh, he loved sailing, getting out on the water and just, yeah, whatever. If there was fun to be had or a laugh to be had, Nate was in the middle of it. So uh, it was a lot of fun leading Nate. Um, but on sailing camps, there's a really unique opportunity to spend time, uh, a significant amount of time, out on the water, on a boat, sailing uh, in a small group. And you can have some really great conversations and, and they can be deep conversations as well and so we spoke about all sorts of stuff um, but I also took the opportunity to uh, ask him about his faith, ask him about Jesus, uh, find out where he was at, what he thought of the Bible talks on camp uh, and so we had some, some great conversations uh, and I always remember Nate at that time, uh, he was very genuine in his questions um, and in, you know, very thoughtful in those discussions. Um, so I could tell that he was thinking about things um, deeply. Uh, so that was um, a couple of years of being a, a leader um, for Nate. And then uh, he went off and did some other camps as he got older. And then I found myself, uh, or I stepped up to direct the camp. Uh, and so I emailed Nate. Uh, we'd kept in contact via email over the years. And so I emailed him and said, would he like to come back as a junior leader? And it struck me, uh, that first camp that he led, um, that, you know, he was doing it for exactly the same reasons that I did. He was uh, younger than I was, obviously, um, so he had a bit more energy, like I used to have when I was that age, uh, to just go all day with the campers, cramming as much fun uh, as he could into every, every minute of camp. Um, so that's what I remember him as a leader, but I also remember just the heart that he had for, for getting kids talking about Jesus, finding out where they were at, sharing the gospel um, as well, taking those opportunities. And so these days um, the relationship continues because now Nate's the director and uh, he tells me what he needs done on camp and I help out. Uh, on camp still and uh, help him with some sailing training and, and other bits and pieces as well. Uh, so um, it's been wonderful. Um, yeah, it's wonderful now as, as equals and serving alongside each other um, to, to do it and, and we do it for Jesus. Um, there's, there's no other reason and, and I'm so encouraged by, by Nate and his passion to see as many young people on camp as he can cram on camp um, and his crew will let him, you know, physically jam onto boats and onto the campsite. Uh, and he just wants so many, as many as he can, to hear the, the good news of Jesus. And that's a real encouragement. I'm the poor guy who's got to work out how to keep them all safe on the water. But I think, well, okay, they're, they're here, they're on camp, they get a chance to hear about Jesus. That's the most important thing. We can, we can have a slow sail if that's what it takes because there's, you know, too many kids on the boat. But 
that's more people that we can talk to about Jesus. I feel like I have to say, no one has ever been seriously injured. Just to very... I mean, I have been injured once, but no, no one else has been seriously injured. Yes. Well, maybe we'll continue, Nate, and you can tell us your side of the story, how you got involved with Crew, and, and how that has shaped your journey uh, with Jesus through the years. Yeah, so I think Mick really kicked it off. There, there's, uh, there's one part of sailing camps I think Mick does very well, and I think it's present on all crew camps, but it's kind of highlighted when you're sailing, is that deliberate question about Jesus, is that deliberate question about the talk, it's that deliberate question about what you think. And the great thing about sailing is you're stuck on a boat, right? So, like, they can either answer the question, get out of the water, get out into the water, realise they can't go anywhere, and they'll come back and eventually talk to you. Um, so that definitely is like a reflection for me. And I think the deliberateness of not just Mick, but there were a bunch of other people, Tiges, Northy, Claire, there was a bunch of leaders there that really were very deliberate in how they spoke to me, right? Because we're retired teenagers. We're no longer able to make that connection. It's got to be a deliberate choice about what you're speaking about. And I think that for me is something that really stuck with me. And there was two things for me out of um, a chat at Mayuna Bay, which is where we go for a sail out, and also a chat throughout the week. There were two things that really sat with me. Um, what the first thing was, your relationship with God needs to be an individual one. I'm very fortunate. I come from a family that are Christians on both sides of the family. My grandparents are missionaries. My parents were missionaries. My sister is now a missionary. It's a lot of God around me, right? Which is, which is very, a great blessing. I think in that time, though, I had lost the fact that I needed that personal relationship with who God was. And I think really that's what I saw in leaders like Mick and the others was that one-to-one -one relationship that was there. The second one, which might sound a little odd, but like definitely it really had to be the God of the Bible, not just the God that was around you, right? And those two, I think, go together quite a bit. And I think that was the thing for me, reflecting on one of the things that I have been very passionate about crew and excited for going forward, is that really that dedication to it has to not just be a personal connection, but it has to be the God of the Bible, and that's who we stand beside. And I think that for me was quite, quite something. And I, that has been what has stuck with me and how I guess... Um, sailing adventure has changed over the years as we've been there. So when I was a camper, we were maybe about 20-something campers and about 12 leaders. We now have space this year for 160 campers. We have a team of 50 leaders, so it feels like a camp within itself. Um, I get the great joy of kind of running the camp of the leaders whilst the leaders run the camp of the campers, which is great fun. Um, but I think the primary, those two primary things have still stayed there, which is, you know, the, the, that connection with God needs to be a personal one and needs to be a connection between you and God and that God that you're connecting with is the God of the Bible, not just the God that you understand from the world around you. That's so great to hear. And what I've heard is that the story now continues. So, Nate, as Mick led you on camp, you, is it true, now lead... Mick's daughter on camp. I do, I do. Well, so now we get all, the, the halls have all come, which is great. And this is, we've been trying for, if Annie has done every year on camp that she can do, basically, except for a couple where she saw the excitement of some other second-rate crew camps, because Sailing Adventure is always the first. <laughs> They'll still far outstrip any others, but that's any other organisations. Um, but yeah, no, so now very exciting. She's coming back. She's going to be a leader, which I'm very excited for um, and excited to have her here. Uh, so we've actually invited Annie and she has taken some time out of her HSC right now to come and join us this morning. So would you make her feel welcome to the stage? <laughs> Annie, thank you for being here. I hope you're not too stressed, although I have heard your next exam is a little bit far away, so that's good. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you remember of crew camps when you were growing up? Right. What I remember of crew camps when I was growing up, uh, well, I have been on sailing adventure almost every year since I was born, uh, which is pretty crazy. I remember doing my paint with water on the floor of the old kitchen at Lake Back uh, when it was ridiculously hot and that was the only place that had an aircon going full blast. <laughs> um, I also remember winning a lot of memory verse challenges, um, which I think the leaders were sort of happy about because the lollies didn't end up in the campers' hands. Uh, surprisingly, I don't actually remember doing heaps of sailing. Uh, we seem to remember doing a lot more canoeing with my mum. And surprisingly, I actually only discovered my passion for sailing a couple of years ago. Um, but I'm so glad I have um, because it's so much fun and the best camp activity. Amazing. So, Nate, on your side, what's your first memory of Annie on camp? 
Yeah, I was reflecting on this beforehand. I'm pretty sure it was you, but it's the little bouncer that connects to the roof racks and her jumping up and down in the old hall bouncing um, as we go there. Um, I definitely don't remember you taking all the lollies, but thank you. That, that's a great joy. Um, I think what I always reflected on was having um, uh, Mick, Ev, Annie, Katie and Ed all there as like a camp family showing what that looks like to the campers. But I think for me, Annie was always the, the laughs the loudest. So I don't know if you've been to Lake Macquarie. Um, there's a site that's just up on the water and there's something called 100 Acres, which is on the other side of the road. And you could be a couple of kilometres away and you could still hear Annie laughing with great joy as to what's going around. I was also really blown away by a couple of things which made me excited to have you as a leader. So the first one was her ability to relate to anyone that was around her. So um, she, you can really pick up and go through. And I remember her as a little kid um, being able to talk to like the year 10 kid and the year 10 kid actually talking back and then being like, well, yeah, that's like a six year old actually having a full on conversation with a 14, 15, 16 year old, which was great. The other one as well is like, like Mick, and I think this is probably to do with how you are as a dad, you could see that real passion for Christ that was in there and that willingness and openness about her faith, which is something as a leader, it can't be something that's hidden, it's got to be something that's bold. Absolutely. Uh, so Annie, how would you say you've grown through your faith uh, in crew camps and, and how do you see crew camps being part of your life maybe after the HSC? Apparently there is a life after the HSC. Yes, apparently that's what people have been telling me. Um, so I would probably pinpoint kind of about year six into year seven as the moment where I decided that I was actually going to take my faith as my own thing. Uh, it, was, it became personal, um, like you said, Nate, uh, not just something my family did. Um, so that was through a combination of going through Exodus on a crew camp and also my first term of youth group. Um, I really just saw the connection um, of how God provided for his people back then. And I thought, well, hey, if he provides for his people um, back then, surely he's going to provide for me now. Um, so being able to come on crew camps, uh, especially sailing adventure, and share my faith with others has been really awesome. Um, and also to be able to chat about some really big questions um, in discussion groups. Um, I also really enjoyed um, becoming a junior leader a couple of years ago um, and getting to share my faith with other people. Uh, one illustration uh, that will always stick with me from a sailing camp talk um, was an illustration about what sin was. Um, and our speaker got a glass and he put the grossest things in it and then Nate walked in and just chugged the whole thing. <laughs> So I'm, it I'd was never... horrific. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, only one person injured on a camp. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's probably the illustration I will remember the most um, from our talks on camp. Um, and I'm hoping after the HSC I can continue leading. Um, I will I'm almost old enough to be considered an adult uh, for crew leading. <laughs> um, so that makes me more useful uh, to directors than just being a junior leader. Um, I hope to get better at sailing. Um, and also to get better at sharing the gospel with kids um, and being able to reach the next generation. Amazing. So Mick, I might just finish with you. Uh, you've seen Nate grow from this kid into a leader and now you, your own daughter uh, grow up on camp from a kid into a leader. Maybe just tell us how that makes you feel. Um, and then also, how can we, we keep seeing these kind of stories happening on camp? Thanks. Yeah, no, it makes me feel old because um, <laughs> it was certainly a long time ago that I met Nate. Uh, and it was um, my first memory of Annabelle being on camp was actually in Utero uh, when my wife was uh, one of the cooks and um, she was, uh, what, seven months, seven months pregnant. Um, so that's my first memory of you being on camp. But um, it, it really strikes me um, just, you know, reflecting on it, just the regenerative nature of, of cruise ministry, um, and not only cruise ministry, I mean, it's the regenerative nature of sharing the gospel. So it strikes me that if, if, if the, the current generation doesn't tell the next generation, who, who is going to tell the next generation? Who is going to be the one that presents the gospel um, to them? Who's going to present it in a way that's relevant in their context, meets them where they're at, challenges them, you know, Whatever, whatever generation that is. So that's, that's the real encouragement uh, for me. I feel so privileged to have played a part in, 
in you know God's mission and and particularly through the ministry of crew uh, and and crew holiday, holiday camps particularly. Um, so yeah, it just it strikes me that it is God's work, but we need to answer the call. We need to go out and take it to the next generation. And and crew is such a wonderful vehicle in schools. Um, you know, the the next generation has to attend school, uh, and so you know they're in in schools. Um, telling people about the saving faith that can only be found in Jesus. So that, that's wonderful. Um, what's an encouragement I can, I can leave you with? Um, look, I would say get involved. Uh, my own life has been blessed through the, the ministry of crew. Um, I, I have the, the wonderful um, privilege of seeing my own family and, and uh, you know, people that I, I care deeply for um, continue to be impacted by the ministry of crew. Um, so I can employ you to um, get involved, be intentional with your involvement. So um, I'm not sure what involvement might look like for you. It might be praying, uh, but be intentional. Get in touch with a camp director. Find out how you can pray specifically for their camp. Find out how you can pray specifically for schools ministry with crew. Really be intentional with your involvement. And then if I can also uh, encourage you to become invested. As you, as you get more and more involved, um, really become invested. Think about how you can give your time. Um, you may even be in a position where you can give money. You might be able to take a, a week off uh, work. Come and join us on Sailing Adventure or one of the other <coughs> lesser standard holiday camps that our crew also run. Um, but yeah, Get involved, um, see what God will do um, if you allow yourself to, um, yeah, to partner with crew in sharing the gospel and, and see what a valuable platform it is for telling kids about Christ. Well, thank you all so much for sharing with us this morning uh, and even more so for your heart for sharing uh, Jesus with kids on camp. Thank you so much for that. So would you thank Nate, Mick and Annie?